welcome everybody to our 12th public lecture in the 2022 Works That Shape the World lecture series here at the Humanities Research Center, where as always we begin by paying our respects to the elders of the Ngunnawal and the Ngambri people whose traditional lands the ANU is built upon. And let me welcome our speaker today, Dr. David Kim from the School of History here at the ANU. Now, David's expertise includes early Christianity, which is obviously the topic of today's talk on the Gospel of Thomas, and also modern Asian religious history. So he's the author, David is the author and the editor of uh, quite a number of books, including The Words of Jesus in the Gospel of Thomas, The Genesis of a Wisdom Tradition, published in 2021, and also Daesun Jin Rin Ho in Modern Korea, The Emergence, Transformation and Transmission of a New Religion, which was published a year earlier in 2020. Now, David also chairs the ANU Religion Conference Committee, and, uh, and David and his colleagues are organizing a conference on religion and education here next year. And in fact, David is behind a lot of the broader organization of religion-related research, public activities here at the ANU. So I'm very pleased to welcome David to talk to us today about the Gospel of Thomas. David's going to speak for about 40 minutes, and then we're going to have plenty of time for, for questions and answers. So please, please go ahead, David. Thank you, uh, Abraham. Abraham, uh, good evening, uh, everybody. Thanks for uh, joining uh, this evening, Friday afternoon. It's a very tricky time. And I hope that this uh, uh, lecture will be very productive for you. Today, uh, my topic is about the social identity of Gospel of Thomas, the so-called the fifth Gospel in the Greco-Roman Egypt. Uh, before I started, uh, I uh, would you like to thank you for uh, thank you, uh, Professor Ian Gardner and Professor Gary Trump, University of Sydney, as a senior uh, mentor of the subject. The, uh, today, the content of my lecture will be something like examining uh, discovery of the ancient Christian text, a history of the Thomasian scholarship and theories. Then I will uh, propose some uh, argumental uh, questions. What would be the origin of Del's, uh, Del's origin in the era of the uh, Greco-Roman uh, world, uh, canonical dependency or independence? Uh, for that, I will have uh, I try to uh, show the evidence, uh, uh, such as uh, figures of uh, oral tr tradition, a theory for a school of Thomas, and uh, textualization of Jesus' uh, tradition. And finally, I will also talk a little bit about the social and linguistic policy of Thomas, uh, which will follow by Q&A times. There are a couple of terminology. I will often use it. Uh, if you're not familiar, please uh, pardon me. You can ask me uh, at the end of the question, uh, at the end of the paper. Uh, otherwise, please uh, read uh, the below the uh, reference. Study of studies in the Gospel of Thomas have a long history uh, in the modern world. Uh, ever since the discovery of the first portion of the text in 1897. The complete text of Gospel constitute uh, one of the uh, most intriguing uh, discoveries of the 20th century, but wasn't generally held in positive esteem. The Gospel of Thomas contained 114 sayings of Jesus without narrative explanations. The first sayings in the Gospel caused more problems among biblical scholars and readers in the field of Coptic culture of Egyptian Christianity. The, the uh, first sense is Jesus said, whoever finds the interpretation of these sayings will not experience death. Then how did we know that there was a of Thomas in uh, early Christianity? One finds the earliest uh, record of the Gospel of Thomas in the early church father, Hippolytus, in 222 CE. Modern scholars didn't have any material evidence 
uh, for almost 1600 years. However, a group of manuscripts called Oxinchon papyri was discovered by the uh, papyologist uh, Bernard Grenford uh, and uh, Arthur Hunt uh, in the place called Oxinchon in Upper Nile River, Egypt. Among those uh, manuscripts, there were three uh, a fragment of the Greek Gospel of Thomas includes, but British Oxford scholars were unsuccessful to identify its origin at that time. As you see at uh, bottom are uh, P. Oxychus, Papyrus Oxychus I, and that was uh, kind of the uh, papyri books uh, size 15 centimeter by nine centimeter. The Greek papyrus was roughly evaluated as having been written around uh, 150 to uh, 300 CE. 50 years later, two more uh, papyrus uh, uh, was discovered by the same uh, British scholars. It was an amazing surprise uh, for those scholars who study uh, the sayings of Jesus. The Oxychus papyri 654 wasn't in the uh, papyri uh, books, but it was written in papyri scroll that was evaluated as written in uh, 140 CE, much earlier than previous uh, uh, papyrus uh, one. And then 660 uh, papyrus Oxychus papyri 655. Uh, contains another five new sayings of Jesus, we call Logia of Jesus. Nevertheless, the result of Oxinchus' discovery wasn't bring scholars into agreement, but rather scatter them in the field of Agrippa. The Greek means of Agrippa is things unwritten or unwritten sayings, which is more relevant if you are uh, familiar with the known canonical pastor. About 50 years later, Coptic Gospel of Thomas was discovered as part of the Nazar Hammadi Library in December 1949-45. The discovery of Coptic Gospel dated to either 350 CE or 400 CE clearly solved the identi identity issue of the Greek Logia. The relation of the uh, Oxychus papyri to Coptic gospel was explained by a French scholar, Henry Charles Pachy, in 1952. Then, what was the uh, condition of the Thomasian scholarship before the present days? How was Thomas' text evaluated among the scholars? Over approximately 100, 120 years, we see that research output uh, after two extreme stage of the peak and drop has gradually increased, thereby to some extent diminishing the uh, com uh, confusion of Thomas' theory. The diagram shows uh, 77 books and articles were published between 1897 and 1979, and 30 official writing was, uh, was between 1904 and 1905, reflecting the serious concern of biblical scholars. 300 research studies were reported between 1959 and 1962 in four years, indicating successful results of a translation of the Sahidi copy, Gospel of Thomas in 1959. The historical stream of the Thomasian scholarship can be divided into the four development periods. The first one is age of the uncertain, uncertainty, as I just mentioned, uh, Oxygen's Papai are uh, one, 654 and 655 was misunderstood, uh, such as pieces of the gospel according to the 
Egyptian or translated according to Hebrew. The Greek fragment of Thomas was lost in the Logia rumors. The age of the identification 1945 to 76, Coptic scholars confront the major stumbling block, the whole problem of Thomas or a question of the ultimate position of the Thomas text among the canonical gospels. Credibility of the Nazar Hamadi Thomas, especially in relation to the synoptic gospels, remained, in, uh, remain, uh, remained a mystery, and it was often scaled down among the scholars of this period. The third period of the uh, popularization for modern uh, readers, 77 to 93, there was a uh, complicated issues in the publishing process. James Robinson's book, a work of the Nazar Hammadi Library in English, 1977, brought it a wide uh, readership. Thomas Lemkin used a uh, modern linguistic method to make the English uh, version friendlier to uh, present day readers. Final stage from 1994 to present time. Uh, during the last decades, Thomas scholars have analyzed various literary and psychological aspects of the ancient texts. This new reading tendency, based on the reader response criticism, moved readers into the new dimension of Thomas' ideology. In this context, In this context, what shall I argue with Thomas? One of them is uh, what would be the Dale's origin or what was Dale's uh, social, ideolo uh, social ideological uh, identity, sorry, social identity in the Greco Roman Egypt. This lecture, uh, I will rethink originality of the Gospel of Thomas, examining Thomasian, Thomasian Jesus tradition not as data for sketching historical Jesus, but as a uh, compilation of community wisdom uh, rendered into uh, writing in the uh, transitional period between oral and literally a phrase of early Christian movement uh, as a stepping stone or internal bridge. The canonical, uh, the chronological uh, diagram, which you are uh, looking at the moment, illustrates a uh, hypothesis. The Thomas is a first century text written uh, at the end of the relatively peaceful uh, period of the primitive Christianity, uh, I say 45 to 60, before it confronts social darkness of the era of the Jewish, uh, Jewish war, 66 to 70. Archaeological uh, evidence suggests that, that while Nazar Hammadi Codex II containing Thomas didn't prove any evidence for an early data than around 340 to 400 CE. The paleographical data of the Greek fragment of Thomas, uh, especially uh, uh, 654, was generally accepted to be around 150 CE. Scholars investing, uh, investigating relation of Thomas to the canonical gospels then changed their attention from literally evidence, literal, uh, material evidence to literal, uh, literally uh, characteristic of a text. The claim that was written around 120 CE was based on the supposed influence of a Gnostic source. Here, Robert French observed a similarity between Thomas and Gospel of John, which allow others to uh, uh, posit a data between 80 to 100 CE, and we consider the value and importance of Jesus Logia and Thomas as a potential product of the, early, uh, the first century. However, if one simply uh, compared the uh, particular literary character of Thomas with the other ancient writings, Origin of the text can also be traced to the period before 70 or 80 CE on the understanding that synoptic aspects were written after Jewish war. 
if one is to take into uh, account this argument, it is problematic to support the Thomas, Thomas uh, community would write a text of Jesus tradition during the socially insecure condition of um, 60s AD. Following steps of arguments, we arrive at the uh, classical uh, data for the composition of the Thomas that place it within the living memory of the disciples of Jesus. The common characteristic of Thomas with Q uh, underpinned the argument of the originality of Thomas from the era of a pre-canonical gospel tradition. This reconstruction of an independence Jesus tradition will be a challenging point of the view for conservative readers. But if one accepts appearance of the queue between oral tradition and later literally gospel, the date of uh, 45 to 60 CE carries quite considerable weight as being most likely historical period during which the initial text of Thomas was recorded. Then can one prove the new theory for the origin of the Thomas tradition? Is there any evidence for this new approach? I would like to uh, uh, show three evidence uh, among them. One of them is uh, something uh, relevant with the oral tradition. Thomas has many figures uh, of oral tradition. The oral uh, Buddhist oral scroll culture in antiquity has been a subject of a frequent discussion in modern research, including studies of the Hebrew scripture, Kumnan text such as the Dead Sea Scroll and rabbinic culture. These same oral practice would have held a sway in Jesus' movement of the first century CE. Several Christian texts certified continuation of the verbal traditions as well as their effort in the world of a written tradition. For example, if you see uh, the guy called uh, Apollos, for example, incomplete uh, teaching of the oral traditions of Jesus was passed on to a young Jewish man uh, of Alexandria called Apollos. He was identified when he, as a user of the oral tradition, came to Ephesus, uh, pervading an uh, incomplete knowledge of the Jesus uh, Christian baptism. Uh, if you see the uh, uh, the uh, Acts, the text of Acts, especially chapter eighteen and nineteen, illustrate that tradition of John's baptism, water baptism, was communicated to Apollos without instruction. This was un uncovered through the Paul's observation at Ephesus, where Apollos had a visit earlier. Account of the meeting of the eloquent man with Paul's uh, fellow worker Priscilla and Aquila in Acts chapter 18, 26 is the context in which the misunderstanding about oral tradition of Jesus and his teaching was corrected. This episode confirmed the ongoing transition, uh, transmission and comparison of Jesus' tradition between missionary, different missionary parties. Fragment of the early Bishop uh, Papias uh, around 125 demonstrate the trace of oral tradition uh, surviving through the first century and into the second century CE. Papias' nickname, such as a hero of John, a colleague of uh, Polycarp, and an early man, attest to uh, uh, Papias' experience as purveyor of the oral tradition. The quotation you can see here uh, talking about what I formerly learned and had carefully stored in memory. And if you go another way to part, uh, what Peter said, what Thomas had said, or James was the same as from the voice which yet lived and remained. 
this statement of Papias remind with whether Papias actually collect oral tradition from the uh, presbyters directly or uh, second hand from the disciples of the presbyters is uh, not the main concern. But main point here is that text of uh, Papias in those sections relating to what Thomas had said attest place of Thomas as an authority, uh, authority, authority of the oral logia tradition. Accordingly, Gospel of Thomas uh, works all, uh, almost exclusively with a highly oral form of the isolate uh, uh, frame, which nevertheless is the subject to modification in transition, as well as reduction in being reduced in, uh, to a uh, written form. For example, uh, the textual composition of the uh, Logia 9 uh, so was terrible in comparison with Mark chapter 4, 3, and 8 provide an instance of this phenomenon. You see the uh, capital A, uh, small a, uh, and the capital C and small c, and the capital F and the small f. It's a comparing between a uh, gospel of Thomas and a uh, gospel of Mark. Here we see a uh, uh, small a, Thomas a, he uh, took a handful of seeds, which didn't appear in Mark's text, offered a form of oral structure. At the same time, one can't imagine that the phrase about the seed falling on the rock in Thomas' text, small c, have, uh, could have originated from Mark's nicely descriptive phrase, capital C. Likewise, the phrase uh, small f, it bore 60 per measure and 100 and 120 uh, per measure of Thomas, described from the third person perspective, is simpler and more logical for readers rather than Mark's account of 30, 60, or even 100 times, capital F. If Gospel of Thomas has such this kind of the uh, primitive literary characteristic, one should recognize the origin of the composition as a pre-orderly uh, constitute logia heritage of the pre-Mark period, not directly related to the pre-Mark written materials. The second evidence I want to propose for the uh, uh, the uh, for the origin of Thomas is about theory of school of Thomas and the textualization of the saints tradition. The second evidence is school of Thomas would have worked for the textualization of Jesus tradition. Now I will consider possible character, uh, educational uh, attitude of Thomas in relation to the uh, necessity of canonization for the transmission of Jesus tradition. Did Thomas possess a institutional skill that would have permit him or his disciples to undertake the process of the community canonization? In this regard, uh, a school in uh, antiquity uh, was both uh, a place of study and collective identity centered around some kind of the oral instruction or at most lecture note authorized by a person of the uh, doctrinal authority. The book of Acts portrayed the power operating in such a context of schools. While at Ephesus, we are told Paul operate a school in which 12 chosen men was intensively trained in the place called uh, the lecture hall of Duranus for two years. Uh, the picture is showed it's an archaeological site. Looks like a quite huge uh, the, a school uh, Paul was running professionally. Uh, that wasn't a unique case. But in that era, the community of Thomas would have 
such that a system of running uh, a screw. In this perspective, so it is classical to propose the formation of a screw atmosphere in the Tomashian community. Since the members of the community confronting end of the oral tradition would uh, definitely want to convey uh, the teachings of their direct founder, the Thomas the disciple. Who then actually, uh, who then actually composed the original text meant to convey the school's teaching of Thomas? Uh, two scholars called John Barclay and Tim uh, Parkin uh, both agreed about the uh, uh, Greco-Roman age profile uh, that the uh, population of the era, the first century CE, uh, constitute of about 60% of people under the age of the 30. About 33% were between 30 to 59, about 7% were over age of the 60, and about 4% was over 65 uh, years old. Typical age of the marriage for non elite men was about 30 years old, and for women, it was around 15 years old age. Of course, there are some exceptional cases. Uh, this provides historical data that age generation in the Great Roman era and the first century was 30 years old in general. If the historical notion that oral tradition of Jesus lasts from the uh, last until middle of the second century is the, uh, a standard view among the scholars, one should consider the whole period from the death of Jesus to the end of the uh, fourth generation. The diagram shows four different generations uh, based on the from Jesus' generation. Uh, in that period, the oral tradition was existed. And if there is, an ev there is evidence of a direct dependence of oral tradition in the Gospel of Thomas, and less evidence of a dependence on textual source, it is possible to pose a generation close to Jesus as the one uh, involved in the textualization process of the uh, Thomas community. If disciples of Jesus in general didn't need to render a logia tradition into the written form as they themselves were eyewitness, eyewitness, and contemporaries of Jesus, then one might focus on the role of the second generation when the first generation died or retired from the active leadership uh, around the age of the 60s. However, doubt may, may be raised about the role of the second generation if one contemplates the following two factors. The first one is Christians, Christian persecution by Jews and Romans were rapidly increasing, which caused the death of the James and John, the sons of Zebedee, and James the righteous, and the both Peter and uh, Peter and Paul during the period of the 45 and 60 CE, threatening survival of the tradition. Secondly, yet the second generation would be the only around 20 or 30 years old. That it wasn't good enough age for them to become a leader of the community, so they wouldn't have authority to have chance to uh, involve the uh, uh, textualization process. Meanwhile, uh, it is uh, judicious to consider a bridging generation between the first generation and the second generation, the so-called 1.5 generation of Jesus. The marginalized generation began approximately 15 years after Jesus and lived until 75. This is quite applicable. This 1.5 generation hypothesis for the textualization of Thomas is new to Thomasian uh, scholarship. So today my paper is quite relevant and it is based on this 
uh, theory of 1.5 generation. The canonical gospels commonly mention not only the appearance of the children with the elder parents in the company of Jesus, but also personal concern of Jesus about those children, those uh, children. For example, Matthew uh, chapter 19, Mark chapter 27, and John uh, chapter 11. These children, teenagers, constitute 1.5 generation. They, as children, were the witness of Jesus from their personal experience, seeing or meeting him. 1.5 generation, which may have been trained in the school of the community, was mature enough to be involved in the textualization process based on the memory and rough notes of the community master. Initial purpose of the creating a documented tradition on the base of the memories of the living voice is implicated in the literary uh, datang of Thomas, literary journal uh, of Thomas. The fact that there is no, uh, bus, uh, no vestige of the canonical uh, narratives, no reference to the cross or resurrection issues, and no trace of the reductional dependence on any canonical version of each saint indicate the purpose of the Logia keeper, Thomas, to draw up a wisdom book, uh, a Sophia book. This purpose is further demonstrated by the absence of the miracle stories, which also, which for the canonical gospel became um, one of the major part of the narrative. If you see another uh, huge number of the catch words in the Gospel of Thomas, provide a primitive organizing figure of the text and surprise evidence that compile of the Thomas text gave some thought to aiding the memorization of the logia following the most common uh, educational strategy of the era. In fact, there are 64 uh, catch words in the Gospel of Thomas which proves uh, what I'm saying at the moment. And another figure is doublet, uh, another indicator of the rudimentary uh, character of the textual reduction. This phenomenon indicates the primitive character of the composition, where in more than one verse, version of a logion has been collected and not resolved into a single form in the process of the reduction of activity. Gospel of Thomas in this relation has many pair of pairs of the doublet, such as Logia 55 and 102, Logia uh, 56 and 80, and Logia 87 and 120 are the most clear cut example of the doublet uh, Logia in the Gospel of Thomas. Based on here, the scholar Kisbata contends that doubleting phenomenon is rather uh, the part of the uh, harmonizing uh, attempt by the compiler. The last evidence I want to talk about is the sociological, uh, social uh, linguistic policy of Thomas. Uh, then, what would be the original language of Thomas? Memorization of memorization culture in the ancient world. Uh, began to decline when the new transitional method of the literalization was successfully launched uh, to transfer cultural knowledge of the local society into the Greek language. The imperial lingua uh, franca was the most dominant and the useful communication medium as English is in modern days. Logia Brefa of Thomas wasn't we are thinking about this uh, or his mother tongue, but we would have a, a serious concern about the impact of the text for the future of the community. There are a couple of the uh, suppositions uh, that origin of the uh, original language of Thomas was uh, Aramaic, uh, which was uh, argued by uh, Kiswell, uh, claimed the original language of the Gospel of Thomas was Judean uh, Aramaic. 
and another scholar, uh, Edwin uh, Yamochi, uh, one of the, those believing that text of Thomas reflect a pre-Christian uh, Gnosticism, claims that Gospel of Thomas, like the Act of Thomas, was originally written in Syrac. Uh, and but those are not quite strongly approved. If, if uh, there is limited evidence that Syrac and Aramaic language uh, was the original language of Thomas, the fact that the text is preserved only in Greek and Coptic requires some caution about the hypothetical original or original in uh, another language. Just as the uh, such caution is deemed a propriety on the question of the whether any New Testament text was originally uh, written in Aramaic. They are all written in Coptic, uh, in, uh, in Greek, sorry. The existence of the uh, Oxygen Greek fragment then said justify the possibility that Logia text uh, was uh, composed in Greek uh, for the use of the both bilingual Jewish uh, Christians and new converted Gentiles. Also, Coptic version of Thomas shows a clear evidence or signs that uh, it was translated from the Greek not from Aramaic and Syria. Practically 60% of the Coptic text uh, was coming from the Coptic uh, Greek uh, words. In this regard, uh, what is the secret of the name uh, Didymus Jude Thomas? Official name of the Jewish uh, Hellenized historian, uh, Flavius Josephus. He was living seven, uh, 37 to 100 CE, similar times. Was, wasn't generally, uh, it wasn't generally his full name, but was taken from the family name of the emperor, Roman emperor uh, Vesc uh, Vescasian, when uh, Josephus was given favor through the fulfillment of his prophecy regarding uh, Vescania's uh, rise to power. The Norman Flavius, which reflect, represent, reflected effectively uh, represent uh, sponsorship of the, his imperial uh, throne, provide uh, Josephus a certain authority through the uh, uh, entire uh, empire, uh, including la uh, land of the Judea and Jerusalem. In the same way, official name of Thomas Didymus to the Thomas can be understood through the principle of the power of his first name. If Coptic translator thought about the non Jewish Greek speaking, speaking and Christians in the Hellenistic society, initial name in such a uh, compound identification emblematized a primary identity where he come from or what kind of social position he would possess. Coptic translator used uh, a Greek uh, nickname. Didymus uh, at the front of the official name. This manner of the writing Didymus to the Thomas appeared to involve the linguistic power of a Greek as a major communication tool in the Greco Roman world. Here, if one see, uh, I want to talk about the linguistic transmission to uh, from Greek to Coptic. If one see, uh, if you see a diagram here, linguistic transmission from Greek to uh, Coptic, uh, omitted word or phrase of the Greek text, added word or phrase of the Coptic text, and another various textual alternation in the press uh, in the process of the transmission proves not only direction of the translation, but also extension and development of the commercial community in the cross-cultural environment. Three Greek uh, fragments are not from the same one, but they are all from different uh, backgrounds, so they're not exactly the same. But if we still compare these three uh, Greek, uh, uh, Greek fragments, uh, most, uh, most of the 17 Greek logia has, has been changed into the Coptic in some aspect of a literary composition. 
Among them, nine Greek logia was omitted and four Coptic logia was extended. And 13 logia of the Greek text have been rearranged in their internal sequence by the Coptic translator. Based on the material we have for comp uh, comparison, we, we can see uh, the clear uh, signs that Coptic uh, is a, a translation of a Greek original, that the key uh, point of the, each logia hasn't been uh, altered radically, even in the process of the trans, uh, transmission and translation. As I conclude uh, my lecture, in this lecture, in this lecture, I have argued the innovative uh, theory that word of Gospel of Thomas constitute the genius, uh, genesis of a Jesus tradition uh, originating from the middle of the first century. The position of Thomas in the history of early Christianity is often misinterpreted as a metaphorized Christian text of the second, third, or fourth century. But main argument has been to uh, reinforce the lit, uh, written uh, source view of the text between oral tradition and synoptic tradition of Jesus. The new hypothesis has been uh, presumed in relation to the pure Kurel tradition, which is generally uh, perceived as a source of canonical gospels, particularly for saints material shared by uh, Gospel of Matthew and Luke. The Logia tradition of Jesus in Thomas is not the same as traditional Q, but is actually a different kind of Q, which is simply called a Thomasian Q tradition of Jesus. The Logia and oral Logia tradition of Jesus, which arose from the speeches of the historical, historically living person, is undeniably uh, shadowed in Thomas. Eyewitness report of canonical narrators present a clear picture that a rumored logia circulate among the new, uh, new Jesus uh, communities without clear formation and regulation or arranged order, while the eyewitness disciples were still uh, testifying these logia tradition over the land of the Palestine. The passion of the Coptic translator was to support and upgrade uh, primary uh, purpose of the initial leadership in the, uh, in the community of the Thomasian society. This view is comprehensive as the text not only survived in uh, its uh, transitional history, but stood as a meaningful heritage for the descendants of the Thomasian community, even in India. Thanks for uh, your attention. Um, quite, quite happy. Thanks for your time as well.